So I'd just like to read something, uh, uh, intro on this. So, uh, so the geoengineering, the, uh, so it's reasonably, I mean, we could uh, ban geoengineering, but uh, recently the federal government and uh, some of the major universities have uh, called to start to engage in geoengineering and uh, I don't know if anybody has reviewed any of the stuff that I sent out earlier about geoengineering. Um, the, uh, what I have here, these are all documents from, from like the DOD, Global Research, these are all government documents from, you know, stemming back to 1978 about proposed geoengineering, geoengineering studies, um, independent studies, you know, any of this stuff is available for the, for the committee members. But as of today, as of actually as of March 24th, um, the federal government and some of the major universities have, they're actually calling to start to engage in um, geoengineering of the environment to, in their words, to try to combat uh, climate change or, or you know, other situations. So it'll be a man-made, it'll be a man's inter interaction with the uh, environment to, to adjust the environment. So this bill, um, H6011, is, 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 it's essentially a licensing bill that would, uh, anybody that wants to engage in any type of uh, uh, environmental engineering would have to apply for the license and um, be totally transparent to the public and have a uh, apply for the license and um, go through all the proper channels of licensing. Uh, I have some witnesses here that um, are also know more about the law of uh, Introducing something like this, and um, I just had one thing I wanted to read from uh, uh, Rosalind Peterson, who is uh, she? She's been involved with this for a couple of decades. She's out in uh, um, California. She she's with the Agricultural Defense Coalition, so they've been following this in. Uh, um, actually testified in front of the United Nations um, in one of their committee hearings discussing this actual uh, process, what they would be doing. And, uh, and she says, uh, it should be noted that the UK Parliament and the US House Science Tech Te Technology Committee held hearings in 2009 and 2010 on the global geoengineering governance. So that's with the actual, our federal government, with the uh, um, UK Parliament. And uh, we're now faced with the reality of ongoing and upcoming geoengineering and the consequences of these actions. Uh, it's it's uh, important for, for each state to take actions to protect their economy, the resources, and a myriad of uh, um, plans for the future. You know, this, this addresses the uh, oceans, the agriculture, the forestry, our economy, human health, and uh, it you know, could negatively impact all of these programs. And, uh, and uh, I would just encourage everybody to, you know, have a look at this and uh, um, do a little bit of research and, and uh, certainly support this. Because it's here right now. They're proposing to actually start doing these programs, and they're doing one in, in uh, Arizona um, with some some uh, geoengineering there, which I you know I don't really want to get into the details of it. But um, so if any programs like that start to come to Rhode Island, I think that there should be um, governance, and uh, we should certainly have a part in. A say as to what's going on in our state for you know for our economy and uh, um, 
the uh, environment because uh, it's very important to me, and, I'm, and I know it's important to you guys. So, uh, thank you. So that's uh, this. So I have a uh, couple of people that would like to testify. If there's any, uh, uh, Chairman. So what I press is there one member, one of the, the two that you want to let have sort of as much time as they need. I'm going to be sort of that they, because we have so many folks coming up on the next bill. I'm going to, I, I, you know, I'm going to give the representative all the time to me, but I'm also going to have a proponent. There's no opponent. Nobody's opposed. At least. Uh, and I think so, the, the hearing's a little hard on, on spots here, but I was anticipating um, asking the second person, though, to limit their testimony between two and three minutes. So okay. I was going to say, is there one person you'd rather have? I so the names are a little, um, I've got Julio Gomez and... Jolie Diane. Um, oh, sorry. What's that? Jolie Diane. Did you sign up? That's right. No, if you didn't, I'll write your name on there. Um, but so, so Julio, would you like to? Would you like to go first? Sure, I'll go. All right. Okay. So. Good afternoon. I am Julio Gomez, an attorney practicing for 20 years in civil rights, commercial litigation, and environmental law. I live and work in New Jersey, and I'm here today as legal counsel to Dane Wigington of GeoengineeringWatch.org, a California activist, and the Minnesota Natural Health Coalition an educational nonprofit organization based in Minneapolis. The geoengineering.watch.org is a data and research repository on the critical issue of global climate engineering and climate intervention programs. Uh, that website has had over 26 million people visit, and roughly 20,000 people visit that website daily. Uh, Minnesota Natural Health Coalition is a nonprofit focusing on natural health and health freedom choices. Uh, they've taken an interest in geoengineering because of their belief that geoengineering poses uh, substantial harm to health. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to offer comments here in support of House Bill 6011, the Geoengineering Act of 2017. And I begin my comments by stating categorically that man's ability to, to deliberately manipulate and control the climate and change our environment is no longer science fiction. More than 25 years ago, in 1991, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office assigned to Hughes Aircraft Company a method of reducing atmospheric or global warming by seeding the atmosphere with a layer of metallic particles, such as aluminum oxide. That patent is currently owned and been assigned by Raytheon, a defense contractor. In 2009, a report by the United Kingdom's Royal Society, which uh, Reverend Price referred to, said this about geoengineering, quote, appropriate governance mechanisms for regulating deployment of geoengineering methods should be established before they are needed in practice. And these mechanisms should be developed in the near future if geoengineering is to be considered as a potential option for mitigating climate change. The Royal Society further posited that there is clear need for governance of research involving large-scale field testing of some geoengineering techniques, especially solar radiation management and ecosystem intervention methods, which could have significant undesirable effects, which might not easily be confined to a specific area. So I'm not going to go through the entire chronology of the number of congressional hearings, and United Nations hearings and reports on this subject. But to put it succinctly, just last month, as uh, Mr. Price uh, spoke, researchers at Harvard University announced a project to send aerosol injections into the Earth's atmosphere in what is probably going to be the world's largest geoengineering experiment to date. <coughs> Given this brief history, there can be no dispute that the technology to deliberately manipulate the Earth's climate is real. It has been studied and written about for decades. And academics and political leaders right now are seriously considering experimentation with the possibility of deploying geoengineering. These are technologies to intentionally manipulate the atmosphere and our environment as a plan of last resort, a plan B, if you will, to counteract the effects of climate change because our society has not been able to control emissions. And fossil fuels is still the energy of the day. Now the only question before this committee today is whether Rhode Island will preserve its right to authorize, oversee, 
and controlled deployment of such radical technologies, especially in light of the monumental risks posed by geoengineering. Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area, beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials and only after careful review by state agencies with the expertise to assess risks and the efficacy of these proposals with input from the public. <clears throat> now, we support 6011 for the following reasons. First and foremost, Bill 6011 is necessary to protect human health and safeguard the environment. The 1991 patent now owned by Raytheon proposed seeding the atmosphere with metallic particles such as aluminum oxide. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to high levels of aluminum can result in respiratory and neurological problems, possibly including Alzheimer's disease. Geoengineering methods also propose seeding the atmosphere with sulfate aerosols, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to sulfur dioxide affects the lungs, and at high levels may result in burning of the nose, throat, breathing difficulties, and severe airway obstructions. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide is the worst. Again, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, a few breaths of air containing high levels of hydrogen sulfide can cause death. Lower, longer-term exposure can cause eye irritation, headache, and fatigue. Now, in light of the fact that geoengineering is being considered seriously, up for experimentation, Rhode Island has a moral obligation to protect the public from these dangers. Geoengineering poses serious risks for the environment as well. Geoengineering techniques may alter precipitation patterns, produce droughts, increase acid rainfall, Aerosol particles sprayed into the atmosphere could accelerate ozone depletion or reduce the total sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface, surface, impact agricultural production, or reduce solar power production. Sulfate injection into the atmosphere could increase acid deposition in the ocean, possibly beyond biological thresholds. Geoengineering may pose unknown stresses on ecosystems and biodiversity. Now, some of these proposed techniques are not easily reversible if the effects are not what were intended. As Newton said, what goes up must come down. Any particulates in the air will eventually fall to the ground on our homes, our businesses, the land, the water, our persons. Farmland covers about 10% of this state. Aquaculture is an important part of the state economy. We are not aware of anyone that has considered much less studied the impact of geoengineering on the ocean state's oyster harvest, for example. The economic impact of geoengineering experiments gone awry is completely unknown. The consequences of, deliberate, of deliberately manipulating the climate and the environment are not completely understood. More research and experimentation is underway, and absent legislation or some form of public oversight to monitor and control experimentation, private actors may be free to engage in reckless behavior in the name of science or financial gain. And I'll give you an example. In 2012, an American citizen conducted a geoengineering experiment in ocean fertilization off the west coast of Canada by dumping 100 tons <coughs> of iron sulfate, sulfate into the Pacific Ocean in an effort to trigger a plankton boom and promote salmon restoration. Now, state laws should prohibit this type of activity without authorization, but current laws do not necessarily prevent these activities. It's not clear that geoengineering is prohibited, even uh, regulated by existing federal and state environmental laws. House Bill 611 will guard against careless experimentation and deployment of any such activity and its concomitant risks. House Bill 6011 proposes a sensible method for tracking and assessing the danger and efficacy of any geoengineering activity in the state and for monitoring that activity and its impacts. In that regard, House Bill 6011 is entirely consistent with this state's environmental policies. <laughs> And this state has vowed to protect air, water, land, and natural resources located within the state from pollution, impairment, and destruction. 
House Bill 6011 upholds this state's commitment to those promises. Additionally, Bill 611, 6011 is a modest bill. It only requires that anyone proposing to deploy geoengineering technology in the state apply for a license. And by disclosing the proposed project, its scope and methods, chemical substances being employed, and the qualifications of the participants, that's not asking a lot in terms of regulation. It promotes transparency by providing the public with online access to that information and an opportunity to participate in the decision-making process through the hearing. It promotes efficacy by engaging the state's leading experts in environment, health, and agriculture, natural resources, and emergency management to weigh in on the potential impacts of the proposed activity. House Bill 6011 is not a blanket prohibition on geoengineering, though some might, some might argue it should be, but it is a sensible approach to a new technology. The deliberate manipulation of the Earth's atmosphere and climate is real. It is imminent. It raises a host of scientific, political, ethical, and moral concerns. And in light of these concerns, Rhode Island is poised to meet that challenge today and lead on this issue for the sake of its citizens and its environment. I thank you very much for the opportunity to present these comments. Okay. Okay. And I'm happy to entertain any questions. Uh, any questions for Mr. Gomez? I have a question. Yes. Um, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, you made your up for it. Yeah, it's okay. So I did a quick research on um, the geoengineering, the whole thing. Yes. And you mentioned that the bill does not go far enough um, in terms of the harmful effects and all that. So I would like to find out from you what would be your recommendations. Well, I would say that it doesn't go far enough. I would say that it's a good first step. Remember, at this point, we believe that Rhode Island is the only state in the union that is considering this kind of regulation at this stage. And that's a smart thing to do. I think if I were to make a suggestion for reinforcing the bill or strengthening the bill, I would ask that you consider requiring the applicant who is proposing a geoengineering experiment or activity to provide some sort of environmental assessment at the outset. Okay. Uh, that's not required in the current draft of the bill. So that would be a way to strengthen the bill, provide more information for the public, provide more information for the director in your environmental agency to assess, is to require that of the applicant at the outset of the application process. Any other questions for uh, Rep. Lombard? Yeah, sorry. Just a couple of questions, sir. Um, you made a very good presentation, just Thank to you. let you know. Uh, what will the fees be to apply for this license? Should they put a bond up? Or uh, should they uh, indemnify, maybe uh, get an insurance policy and indemnify the state in case there are damages? Because uh, obviously I think that's part of the concern. And I don't see any of that in here. And also I don't see any penalties if someone breaches this. So no, there are, I'm sorry. There are penalties in the bills, but I think you make- $500,000 per day per occurrence. Oh, where is that? What page is that? What page is that? Page eight. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't get the page eight, that's right. I don't read that fast. I'm not as smart as everybody else in the show. Representative Lombardi, you, you make a very good point about the suggestion to include indemnification in the bill. Mm -hmm. In terms of the fees, um, I think that part of the process could be left up to the regulatory uh, <coughs> aspects that would follow the enactment of the bill. Depending on the proposed ge geoengineering activity, uh, some are going to be in smaller scale than others. And the ones that are more complicated, the ones that are on a larger scale, are going to require more study and therefore may warrant greater fees uh, because they'll simply take up more time of public officials to assess. Uh, so that could be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. I, I'm just, I just wanted to make sense to put language in the bill requiring uh, insurance policy and then, and then let the director or whomever decide, well, it's going to be $5 million, it's going to be $0.05, cents, it's going to be three rubles. I mean, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Well, you're certainly in the position to make amendments to the oh, bill, uh, and I'm sure they would be anything. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other questions for, for Ms., uh, Mr. Gomez? Um, thank you very much, Mr. Gomez. Can I ask you, were, were you, I know some folks helped to help reprice um, work on the language and bill. Were you one of the folks that helped to work? I was not. No, I came in late in the process. Yeah, but yeah, I, was just, I was just more trying to uh, 
circle back on that as well. And I also have um, copies of my remarks yes. with citations. Yes. So you can. So our clerk, the gentleman behind the desk here, that would be really great. Very good. We'll get them to us. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and I. Um, Sorry, um, I do have also something else though. It looks like it says permit stage. Yeah, that's me. Okay, all right. And uh, did you, it says that you, I just wanted to break down that you were right, you, you weren't speaking, but you were in favor of it. But I wasn't clear on the, um, you, are you representing an entity or are you just going on your own um, behalf? Well, you know. I, I just wanted to know that. I'm sort of associated with his organization. Sure, that, that's fine. I really believe that this is important. I understand, yeah. Um, and that's why I came. Okay, great. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, and then somebody's just signed Kim with anything else, and I don't know what that is. And we also have Salvatore Caiozo um, from what it says here, Rhode Island first, in favor of the bill, but I couldn't tell if that was a yes or no on that they were speaking on the bill. Is that person in the room? All right, well, that person is in favor of the bill. Uh, so again, uh, Mr. Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. And while you're up, yeah, if, if Rep. Lillo uh, would like to be reported in the affirmative on the vote earlier and present, and Rep. Bennett uh, also would like the same request. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Julie Dupas, and I'd like to thank Mr. Gomez for giving such a good testimony. Um, I worked with Rep. Price over the last year and Rosalyn Peterson on the bill. Um, I'm an independent geoengineering researcher and advocate for the environment and human health. Um, I have contracted frequently to laboratories for analysis of the environmental water and snow samples. Um, in such samples, the labs have consistently found the presence of standard geoengineering releases, which are aluminum, barium, strontium, and sulfur dioxide. Um, and this is actually what the geoengineers themselves say that they want to put in the atmosphere. I'd like to just refer you to uh, one of the documents that I gave to the uh, committee. It's called Solar Geoengineering using solid aerosol in the, in the stratosphere. It's written by Professor David Keith uh, from Harvard, the, solar, uh, the School of Engineering. And basically, they just talk about uh, solid aerosol particles have a long been proposed as an alternative to sulfate aerosols for solar geoengineering. And of course, it goes on and on and on about the dumping of particulates and pollution into the atmosphere, into the atmosphere in order to block the sun. Okay, so yeah, um, without a doubt, um, the practice of delivering megatons of atmospheric contaminants into the sky and ultimately to the Earth's surface and waters has to be banned, or else all life is threatened. Um, as a start, House Bill 611 regulates geoengineering activities, and uh, I am very grateful to Rep. Price for introducing that. Um, I submit um, onto the record in substantiation of the deliberate dis distribution of solid aerosol pollution into the environment and lack of consideration for the biological effects thereof. And that's the solar geoengineering in the stratosphere that I just referred to. Um, I also hereby submit on the record three documents in substantiation of the 2010 International Moratorium on Geoengineering by 193 nations. Now, um, so essentially there is a ban on geoengineering, only the United States is not a signatory. And so when we decided that we wouldn't follow the ban to protect bio biological life, a lot of nations just did what we did. And so that's, that's why this bill is so important, because it draws the line in the sand and says absolutely no pollution is allowed uh, to try to mitigate anything. And basically, when you think of geoengineering, you should just think of pollution. That's all it is when we're talking about solar geoengineering. It's just putting up a layer of aerosols and particulates to block the sun. And of course, we all need the sun. Photosynthesis, of course. So this is just an experiment that shouldn't be happening. Um, uh, notably, the United States banned sulfur dioxide and diesel fuel in 2010, all 50 states. The reason they ban sulfur dioxide is because it causes acid rain and it causes asthma in children. So we know this, and yet the geoengineers propose to put sulfur dioxide and aluminum oxide by the ton into the atmosphere, again, to block the sun. 
Um, in relation to sulfur dioxide emissions, um, kindly review the EPA regulations, which I also included. Um, Mr. Paul, I think I should wrap up with Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. So, in closing, I just want to thank um, Rep. Price again for introducing this bill. Um, it's the whole world is watching because these programs are unregulated and they are happening. MIT announced it last week. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank questions you. from Mr. Paul? Any thank questions? You. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, and that concludes the hearing on 6011.